Well, hiya, buddy. So we do a little barn burner breaking news update here on uh, on this Wednesday evening. We're still, what are we, how, how many days away from the trade deadline are we? We're going to have. Well, I think the 8th is the deadline. Tomorrow's the 29th of Feb. So I'd say there's nine days after today. That'll be part, it'll be, uh, I guess, part of the whole story as we get into it, why this deal gets done today. But uh, Chris Tanev on his way to Dallas. Ryan, I'll let you kind of walk through because this sure. it's a little con it's a little convoluted there's some layers to it for sure yeah so the calgary flames have eaten half the salary of chris tanev and via new jersey to eat a little more money along the way have sent him to dallas in exchange the flames will get the stars second rounder this coming summer their 2024 second round pick artem grushnikov who's a 20 year old left shot defenseman playing with the texas stars in the american league and a conditional third rounder in 2026, which is the next year after this year that the Stars have a third. They don't have one next year. Uh, they do have their third in 2026. That condition, we are being told, is that Dallas goes to the cup final this season, the year that Chris Tanev is under contract with them. Devils eat some money along the way. After the Flames eat half, they eat half of what's left. That turns out to be 25%. For their services being a bank, they get a fourth rounder from Dallas. And Dallas, along the way, got the rights to Cole Brady, a guy on da the Devils' signing list. So uh, very much a, a human to move along, less than a prospect of notoriety going that way. So for the Flames, a second and the prospect are guaranteed. The third conditional on deep run for the Stars. For the Stars, they get Chris Tanev at only 25% of his salary. And for the Devils, it's a pick to eat some cash along the way. It's it's a three-headed monster, but it makes sense for all the parties involved. Dallas to eat money, Flames getting rid of a, a veteran that's expiring uh, with pick and prospect that clearly they like. And for the Stars, they add a right-shot defender that slides into their top four. And I guess worth mentioning, the conditions on that pick, if the Stars don't make it to the cup final this year, there is no pick. That third will just go away, and it'll be a second and the player so yeah. it uh you start to take a look at it what how does this trade you know how it makes sense for the dallas stars they've got to be happy it's 25 yep. percent of the salary they give up a fourth which is manageable i suppose to to take some of that cap relief what it does it, it allows them a little bit more business potentially yep. to get done in the next week for jim nil and you add a a fine rugged defender and chris tanev so people watching this or listening to this are probably going to be less concerned about what it is for the stars and what it is for the flames. So it's a second round pick next year. This it's coming summer. On, one, yep. on one hand, you're cheering for them to go to the cup final. So you get a third, but then on the other hand, it's like a first round exit would be all right too. Cause then it's a higher, a higher pick. That but, is a layer. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's uh, if they get bounced earlier, that's going to be a higher second round pick. Uh, but Craig Conroy makes this deal today. This this feels to me, at least from the outside, there's something about this that Craig wanted to get done now. A yep. second, because when you look at Artem Grushnikov, 6'2", 194 pounds, he was a second round pick in, uh, in the 2021 draft. Stay at home, rugged defenseman. There's no numbers there. There's no reason to really believe that numbers are going to come either. But mm -hmm. he's a rugged, stay at home defender. We know that the Flames could use some defenders, but I, I'm curious what it is. This It must be the player, because I'm guessing a second-round pick is there from a number of different teams. This gets done today with a little bit of – there's some work there to be done with New Jersey as well. There's some elbow grease for Conroy. It must There must be something with this player that he and the Flames like. Yes, uh, there has to be. Uh, he now there's a number five beside his name here. Is this a prospect ranking of the star system that you? That is there, and, and it's. I mean, that's arbitrary. It's just yeah, one it of is. many, yeah. one of many different rankings, and that, and that's what you, I think Flames fans are going to maybe be discouraged when they start looking at Dallas Stars prospect rankings. This sure. guy is either not on it or well down it. So the Stars yeah. seemingly gave up a second round pick and one of their depth guys, and are having to meet salary. So anyway, the, the book seems to be on this guy that he's, he's a Russian defender came over and played very well in junior was part of an OHL championship team. And we were talking before we got, we got on here. These guys are hard. They're, they're kind of hard to appreciate. It's hard to know what you're watching when you're not looking for numbers, yeah. when you're a defensive defenseman, your job is to not be noticed. So you could play 5, 10, 15 games and really not make an impression 
but yet be doing extremely well in your own end. And when you think of guys like Jeremy Poirier and you think about, I mean, a little higher up, certainly all of Shillington, right? Shillington. There's some guys that have, that can free wheel and have that offensive ability. Christovich. This, this must be kind of the, the yin to that yang as Conroy would see it. Cause he is, he's a rugged guy and to be playing at 20 years old, I, you, you, you talk about it a lot, Jim Neal. I think the Dallas stars are pretty sharp. They spent yes. a second rounder on this guy who does not have numbers. They signed him to an entry level deal and was playing in the American hockey league at 20. Not a lot of 20 year old defenders are right. playing in the a. Um, so I'm, I am curious to see what this, how, how this player shakes out. Cause to me, it feels like from a distance, the key to the deal. Yeah, I think the second was going to be there from anyone. That was kind of the sense, uh, the sense that we got from uh, our conversation with Frank. It was just a matter of, okay, could you twist someone's arm enough to get a late first? Or it's the caliber of prospect that you're putting with the second rounder. And the Dallas Stars will be happy to attach a conditional third to a Stanley Cup final run because flags fly forever and a trip to the final certainly, I would think, is um, worthy of surrendering a third. It probably means we've got... Uh, you know, some nice run out of the Chris Tanev department if you're if you're uh, Jim Nill and the Dallas Stars. So clearly this prospect does something for Craig Conroy, and you kind of said it. They have a lot of that offense first, point piling up defenseman Moran in the queue who they drafted in the second round last year. Jeremy Poirier, who just returned to practice with the Wranglers after yeah. a vicious slice that he suffered early in this season. And when you look at the Brustevich player that was added in the Lindholm deal – those are three very, very all gas, no brakes type defensemen where you're like, maybe we can teach them the other side of the puck, but they're offensively, offensively gifted. This is a very different looking profile. And if Craig Conroy doesn't like this prospect, there's lots of other prospects that other organizations could tie to their second round picks. It's clear the GM likes this player and something about him. And if he's can skate well and he's physical and he's being effective in the American League at 20 years age at that position, he might be onto something. Yeah. Curious to see what happens with the player now. Does he join the Wranglers? They're going to have a hole with uh, with Tanev gone, obviously, mm -hmm. now. But there's some guys with the Wranglers now that, that could come in. But interest. I, I'm just, I'm, I thought that maybe this was going to go a little longer. We were always sitting and waiting apprehensive when he had traded this guy. It could be the next shift that Chris Tanev gets injured. Well, he traded yep. Chris Tanev before he got injured. Kudos. And I guess it, it's going to take some time to see whether or not maybe you hold out for something else. We'll never know what the other packages were that were available to Craig Conroy here. Sorry, guys, my, my lights, I'm sitting outside the, uh, sitting outside the rink and my truck doesn't want to let my interior lights stay on. Um, but it, time will tell. But to this point, Conroy's instincts have been pretty good. He felt like there was something in Sharon Govich, and I think more people are appreciative of that now than they were Certainly. at the time of the deal. And I think this is maybe one of those deals they're going to have to just accept and and have faith in Conroy that uh, what he sees is is reality and that this guy could come in and play some valuable minutes for them down the road. And you make a good point about uh, Artem Grushnikov. I mean, he's an AHL player and the Wranglers are right here. You might not have to wait long if you want to watch him play. This guy could be suited up in theory by, say, the weekend or next week with the Wranglers in the American League. And yeah. they'll have a chance to get him in with their player development team and get him under their the tutelage of their coaching staff. He'll get some FaceTime with the NHL big club organizational people. I'm sure there'll be conversations there. Um, he, he's into their system now. He's 20. He went right from the OHL as a 19-year-old into the American League. There was not a single game stop at the ECHL. Uh, that is a monster jump at that position, and uh, I think you'll probably get a good look at him in uh, the W jersey of the Wranglers pretty quick here. Yeah. So, and then there was one. We believe there was there was sure a lot connecting Dallas. We talked about it. I think you had it on with Frank the other day. We were talking about Dallas. It seemed like That's Dallas fair. has been dialed in on, on some of whatever it was, whether it was excuse me, Hannafin or Tanev for quite some time. So they get the Tanev deal done. They, it allows them a little bit of breathing room with, with cap to do something else. And then there was one, it's Noah Hannafin. So Craig Conroy, yep. true to his word, is moving out the impending UFAs. I still, I don't see a 11th hour contract signing with Noah Hannafin. So that's, that's what we're left to watch here over the next eight, nine days. Yeah, and just really quickly to wrap the Tanev thing, it is no just brush it aside thing that 
Craig Conroy moved a healthy Chris Tanev. This was certainly a game of chicken with the way that Chris Tanev plays, with the number of times he's gone down the tunnel, with the complete disregard for his body that he plays with, which is so admired and coveted by NHL GMs at this time of year. There's three games left until the trade deadline. There's Mika Kippersoff night on Saturday, Seattle at home next Monday, and then they're off to the their old Southeast Division swing, which is Tampa, Florida, Carolina. Craig Conroy played the game of chicken. He went heads up on the, the the poker hand and he did get to deal a healthy Chris Tan of that, that in itself should allow a lot of people to have a deep exhale because there was absolutely a chance that one of those half dozen to dozen trips down the tunnel that Chris Tan have made over the last three months were ones that could have been substantial injuries, including when he did miss time in the middle of that gauntlet run Dean and missed a game yeah. in Vegas and Colorado where he got hurt. Like this, this was a, this was a very, very, you know, if you if there was one guy you wanted to maybe move early, it was Tanev because of the risk inherited. They almost took this thing to the line. They got it done. Finally, on Tanev, this might go down as one of the best free agent signings made by the organization under Brad Treliving. And again, it's free agency, so often you don't like the back end. But Chris Tanev's availability in his four regular seasons with the Calgary Flames was beyond what anyone could have expected. He was hurt in a crucial series against the end of yeah. Dallas and then the entirety of the Oilers series where he played through some injuries later in that series. But his availability to the Calgary Flames was incredible. And when you say, ah, it's free agency, the last year is probably going to hurt, he's still playing at a level where they've now turned him into potentially three assets. They know they're getting two, the second rounder and the Russian defenseman. They might have a third one if Dallas can make a deep run. And I think there'll be some Flames fans in Southern Alberta rooting for the green of Dallas in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Uh, yeah, Chris you, you love it. salute to you. You love it for ten, for for Dallas and for Tanev. That, that's yes. a great opportunity. You want a chance to go and win. He feels like he'll be a very good fit there. And I know that this deal is only about 30, 40 minutes old. And on one hand, I'm telling people, you know, take a breath, let this thing play out before you rush to judgment. Uh, but we talked about it today, and we were kind of spitballing. So if you get a couple firsts, if you got a first for Tanev and a first for – for uh, for Hannafin, yeah, um, and then before that, a second and maybe Stankoven or Ty Delandria yes. or Maverick Bork. Like this is Stankoven wasn't those, moving, friends, <laughs> right? Like I just, yeah. I, I'm curious where where you sit. Is this does it feel kind of underwhelming? This can't be the return, especially knowing that there was 10, 12 teams in the race to get this guy. It doesn't feel like the return that we were expecting. I would, yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. I, I also think that if it's a second plus a prospect, a lot of people wouldn't have this prospect at the top of list that, of prospects that were probably available to be taken. It tells you again that Craig Conroy really likes this player. Yeah. Because uh, I would have a hard time thinking there's 10, 11 teams in the mix, and you know the price is a second plus at a minimum, where this is, you know, by prospect rankings, the best guy they got offered to them. I don't believe in that. What I do believe is that Conroy sees something here. And that this is a guy he has rated a lot higher than the public or the guys that are doing prospect rankings and system rankings. Uh, the late first always felt like a complete best case scenario. And it, it, I don't know that it occurred. The question will be when we look back at this in five years, is the jump up from a second to a first worth what Grushnikov's given you? And if mm -hmm. it's a guy that maxes out at the HL level, the answer is absolutely no. If it's a guy that plays a number five defenseman and gives you physical minutes, uh, sort of like a Nikita Zadorov light for five, six years down the road, absolutely the answer is yes. So uh, we'll see what he turns into. Left shot, physical, and, and he skates well, apparently, which is something you always want to hear about a player in today's game. And there you can see that is from uh, The Athletic. This is Scott Wheeler's. Prospect there, rankings. He's got a lower go. ranked tenth, but talks about yeah. the tools. Also, Long stride, the, ability to defend. Yeah, good gap control. Excellent backward skater. Disruptive stick, and physic physically can close out players. I'll be curious There's to talk to Red. Yeah, because Red is a guy who he didn't struggle. He did not play in the American Hockey League. He was a defenseman that joined the NHL immediately but what is it when when that is your skill set and your tools your toolbox is defense mm -hmm. and i think it's harder than ever 
to defend. And when you have to rely upon that and you don't, you don't have a power, you're not a power play specialist. There's no offensive side. The only way you're getting noticed, getting drafted and getting into the NHL is on your defensive play. How long does that take? How patient do you have to be? Is this, is he a year away? Is he two years away? It, it's un, until we see him, it's going to be impossible to know, but you, you sit today and I, I'm not trying to make anybody feel better, but a second round pick. I mean, Rasmus Anderson was a second round pick. So if you over Shillington was a second, if round you pick. start Dylan to Dubé was a second round pick, yeah, start to use some of these unknowns in addition to some of these players, he's restocking the cupboard and they're not all going to hit, but you, you got, you got Chris Tanev for four years to your point I think everybody. I think that was a misnomer too, with just how in, injured he was in New Jersey, the, or in in Vancouver. The people don't pay attention to what he did here. It's like, well, he's hurt all the time. Well, he's not hurt all the time. One year he played eighty-two games. He, yeah. he played seventy. The Southeast, he's been over a four-year stretch. Yeah, he was incredibly, luckily healthy for the Calgary Flames. So he was a very good signing, and now it continues to to go forward. Um, it'll be a blow to the room. They love that guy. He loves those guys. That yep. would be. You don't see him. He's not a chatterbox, no. but that will be a very veteran presence. I know this is a hard one for Conroy to make to the point. I know when I brought it up to you guys, like you think he could consider re-signing him because there again, maybe the offers aren't superb. There's no first rounder out there. Do you maybe just try and keep this guy? I, I don't know, but. Well, that's interesting. I mean, he is a free agent July 1. <laughs> yeah. If the market's a little soft or he gets hurt and kind of falls down uh, you know, I guess the, the rankings of who you want to sign. I mean, I, I think they absolutely adore what he brought to this room. He was a lead by example guy. I don't think there are many players in the entire league that uh, offer what he offers in terms of that grit and ability to play through injury, to play with the disregard for his body that we noted. This is a very special player that was undrafted and, you know, just a guy that has turned into one of the elite defenders in the national hockey league. Uh, it's it's an ingredient that Dallas misses. It allows them to push Hanley into their uh, third pair. Harley's obviously having a great year. They've got Haskin in. They've got Ryan Suter, Essa Lindell. They, mm -hmm. they needed a right shot for their top four, and they've got it. And I think the Calgary Flames, what you're going to see in the in the immediate future is you've had Mackenzie Weger playing the left side as a right shot defenseman almost the entire time he's been in Calgary. I think now what you're going to see is Shillington and Hannafin on the left and separated Mackenzie Weger and Rasmus Anderson potentially that would allow uh, Pahal to play the left side and maybe Dennis Gilbert. I see yeah. Pahal on the right and Dennis Gilbert on the left. That'd be a, a physical third pair. But really what we're talking about now is just waiting for the next shoe to drop, which is Noah Hannafin. The yeah. Foley, they get the third rounder, which turns into Suniev, who's at UMass, plus Sharon Govich. Tanev, you get a young defenseman who's 20 in the American League and a second rounder, a conditional third. Zadorov, you got a third and a fifth. Backland, you resign. Lindholm's a five-piecer. Project defenseman, intriguing offensive defenseman, a conditional fourth that could go to three, a first rounder, and Kuzmenko. There's a lot because yeah, I didn't say Kuzmenko. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of pieces that have been added here, and they've dealt with five of their seven free agents. I don't think there's a lot of concern about Oliver Shillington flying the coop. He's what they need, and there's a relationship that was very important between these two parties that allowed him to return to hockey. There's one left, one big piece on the chessboard, and that's Noah Hannafin. After the Lindholm deal was done, it felt like it was one of those trades where Vancouver paid. I think that was kind of, we talked about it today. Vancouver stepped up. They knew they had to to get the player that they wanted. They maybe gave a little bit more. I'm curious because I feel like there might be some hand-wringing over the next couple of days. For, you'll hear of teams that, man, if that's all it took to get Chris Tanev, then you know, why weren't we in there already out of Edmonton? It was a second and a – and a depth prospect to get Tanev. Why weren't we spending that? I'm curious to see what the reaction will be. Cause I think on the Lindholm one, it was, well, Vancouver paid. So Calgary, yep. well done. I don't know. Not that it matters, but I just wonder what the uh, Monday morning quarterback will be on this trade from other teams. Yep. And you know what, that, that was, that would sort of match, I guess the sentiment around the Tyler to Foley deal, which I think now is the Igor Sharon Kovic deal. Yeah, it is. The Foley's only got a few months of, a time left on that contract and theoretically could be even moved ahead of this deadline. If the devils stub their toe in the next nine days. Um, again, we, we, I remember being on a rooftop in Nashville saying this deal, how you feel about it is how you feel about Yigar Sharangovich. And not a lot of people knew anything about him, including us. 
Uh, this deal with Tanov has a lot to do with how you feel about Artem Grushnikov. Yeah. Hard to We're know. We're not the guys watching yeah. the Texas Stars on a nightly basis. It's tough to say. I know we'll hear from Conroy at some point, if not tonight, then into tomorrow to get his kind of his scouting report on on this player. But uh, my my bet is that this is a guy that he has seen that he's been watching. Because remember, he's he was a prospect, uh, kind of a, a a scout prospect evaluator at heart. Still loves going to watch yep. the young guys play. I'm betting that this is a guy that was on his radar for a while. And that this is the this is the player that gets this thing done today. So, um, any final thoughts? That's I'm, I am no now stars curious for with, Chris Tanev's sake and oh, the Flames' yeah. future. Why not the Stars this year? Or or get out early and have a middle second round pick. I think the only thing about the first round, Dino, is that your final four pick 29, 30, 31, 32. Mm-hmm. And everything after that's just regular season standings. So, that point, just go okay, ahead. Okay, so no more wins. Point. Just get to the we, final. We need Ot- Ottinger to get Ottinger injured. We need some. I didn't Wedgewood get hurt? It, it's all coming together. It's all coming together. We don't want people to get hurt again. So the Noah Hannafin watch is officially on. We got just over a week to see what Craig Conroy and the Flames get done there. So Tanev is off to Texas. We're off to enjoy the rest of our evening. Thanks for jumping in here on a barn burner breaking news update. We'll see you, buddies. Be a good show tomorrow. See ya.